hey we all have limitations and you know what your limitations are so don't forget don't be afraid to ask for some help if you need it getting more and more excited as spring gets closer. Well, actually, we are technically in spring, but uh, uh, it doesn't quite feel like it yet. But as it gets closer and closer to this warmer weather, I'm really getting excited about all these new videos that I want to make. Uh, one of them that I've got in the works is uh, driveway mulching and how that's beneficial. The other one is uh, how to save a lot of money by exploiting services that are available on the internet for free or for very cheap. And uh, then also there's going to be a channel that's going to be opening up on uh, YouTube that will be geared more towards uh, food storage, food preparation, uh, grains, non-GMO wheats, uh, where I get them from and how we process them here at the house and so forth and I think it'll be a good thing. Another thing I want to do is give a shout out to one of my subscribers USSBB62. Um, I don't know your name, I don't know what country you're from, but I just want to give you a shout out and say man I appreciate all your encouragement, uh, the compliments that you give, you ask relevant questions and uh, you're just a real joy to have on my channel and I want to say thanks for being there. Um, but anyway, let's get right into the video and uh, talk about AGM batteries. These AGM batteries that I've had, I've had them for three years now, a little over three years, and um, I think uh, I'm more confident to give uh, a pretty well informed opinion about them and share my experiences with them and uh, I'll say that there are some things that I really like about them a lot. The first thing that I like about AGM batteries is they can be used in more than one position. Now uh, the regular wet cell battery it has to be kept upright otherwise the electrolyte all spills out if you lay it on its side. AGM batteries are 100% sealed batteries. Uh, so you can lay them on their side as long as the plates remain vertical. If you lay them on their side where the plates are horizontal, what happens is the absorbed glass mats, the electrolyte in those, will start to stratify and uh, they, they don't last as long that way. So as long as you face them where the plates are vertical, whether they're standing up or they're on their side, just keep those plates vertical and you're in good shape. I love that about them. That's a wonderful feature because if your space uh, gives you constraints, well, you've got a little more flexibility in how you can place those batteries. Um, one of the things that's absolutely awesome about AGM batteries is they can be kept inside your home. So um, you don't have any, ex any fear of explosions or leaks. Uh, and a benefit to the batteries themselves is that they're not exposed to the temperature extremes. My AGM batteries are kept out here in my wood shed and uh, so I have to cover them up with insulation and all this kind of stuff in the winter time to kind of help the temperature not be so extreme between day and night. You don't have to add water to AGM batteries. Like I said earlier they're completely sealed. They're considered leak proof and explosion proof. 
In fact, uh, even FedEx and UPS can deliver these batteries to your home. I got mine via FedEx and I don't think that they'll uh, ship normal wet cell batteries because of the risk of explosion and if they spill uh, the, the electrolyte eats, uh, eats up all the metal in the truck it's, it's, it just makes a big mess so with AGM batteries they're completely sealed they're considered leak proof, explosion proof and you can put them pretty much anywhere you know you obviously you wouldn't want to put them next to your stove because uh, the case would melt but you know any place that's reasonable in your home you could set aside a spot in your closet or something like that and, it, and it's awesome the great thing about AGM batteries is you can actually place them inside your home without any fears you can build a closet to keep your charge controller batteries and inverter inside your home and out of temperature extremes of an outbuilding like we've all traditionally done in the past I would recommend leaving the door to this closet open or having vents at the top and bottom of the door but this was or this would be to prevent heat buildup only. There is no fear of explosive gases, electrolytes spraying into the air during charging, or any of the other nasty issues that we've historically had. You can place them in specific positions as long as it's set where the plates will not stratify the electrolyte in the absorbed mats. AGM technology is not a new technology but it's becoming more and more accepted in the industry and in even our uh, areas of off-grid. And because of this, it allows us to think outside the box a little bit more as far as battery placement goes. So now that we've looked at the things that I do like about AGM batteries, let's look at the things that I don't like about them. And really, that's only one thing. And that thing is, most AGM batteries cannot accept an equalizing charge. Mine are that type of AGM battery that cannot be equalized. Uh, even the ones that can be equalized, they're not really... Uh, the, the way you equalize them is still you got to kind of keep things pretty well constrained. And my set of batteries, I've made some mistakes with them. And as much as I hate to admit that, we all don't want to admit a mistake. But I did make some pretty big mistakes with these AGM batteries, and I'm going to share that with you. This uh, equalizing uh, charge issue that we have with them, this means that we have a more difficult time getting them desulfated. And them being sealed makes it even more difficult. They're best suited for float applications, such as telephone switching offices, where they're always in a float charge and they're only used during a very rare power outage. The constant float charge will eventually kick off most sulfation on the plates, but we don't have the luxury of a constant float charge in our off-grid situation. I happen to be just dumb enough to try things and experiment on a brand new set of expensive AGM batteries and I'm going to share these with you. When they started to degrade, I tried just putting them under a regular equalizing charge like any regular battery and I found out why they don't recommend an equalizing charge. As you can see in this photo, my battery top started to swell and they got much warmer than a standard wet cell would get during an equalizing charge. I feared that I had completely ruined them. However, they worked great and kept a full charge again. But I also knew that I best not perform any more equalizing charges. But being off grid, I can't afford to run the generator all night to allow a float charge to gradually desulfate them. Initially, this made me really dislike them because keeping them at full charge became a nightmare. On my system, an equalizing charge would be 64 volts on a standard wet cell battery bank. My AGM batteries have a full bulk charge rating of 60 volts and a float charge of 55 volts. I changed the parameters in my charge controller from 55 volts to 58 volts for a float charge. Over a period of about four days, my batteries come back to full capacity and I change the charge controller back to the standard settings again. During this time, I watch the battery temperature very closely and if they get above 80 degrees, I put them back to normal charge and then I'll try it again in about three days. 
I have to do this about every two months. A really big point I want to make here is that this appears to work pretty well for me and your situation could be different. So I'm not making this video to say with certainty this is how you handle AGM batteries for your own situation. But what I am saying is that AGM batteries do present a special complication for all of us off-gridders. All things considered, I do like AGM batteries slightly better than wet cell batteries uh, for the obvious reasons that I listed. But if I could afford it and I had my own way and left my own devices, I would still buy a set of nickel iron batteries and use those. I still like those the best for this week's video. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. See you next week or next month or whenever I get to it. I always answer questions whether posted publicly or privately. See you then.